Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Tommy Jordan again. We're, do, we're going over our survival series of blog posts and video posts, and this is kind of, kind of going to be a new chapter. What we're covering right now is going to be bags. Bug out bags, everyday carry bags, what the difference is, why you may or may not want to carry one or both. So, the purpose of a bug out bag, aside from the ten full hat wearing folks who think the aliens are coming or the zombies are coming, um, is to have everything you need to survive any situation you can possibly prepare for. Thing for the purpose for having an everyday carry bag is for your, your, your everyday problems that might come up. Car broke down, you're stuck somewhere overnight. Very uncomfortable, not critically life-threatening. Uh, probably, I mean it, it could be, but not usually life-threatening. But um, so a lot of people will, will pack a bug out bag and not have an e everyday carry bag. Or you're like me, you pack uh, a bug out bag, then you find out it's too small, or you need more, or you never want to carry it because you can't get the things that you need to get to because they're packed in with 70 other pounds of crap. Which prompted me to go to carrying an everyday carry bag on top of my bug out bag. So my everyday carry bag used to be this little bag right here. It's not very big, it's about 50 bucks. I just swapped it out for a Maxpedition Sabercat, which I reviewed earlier, and I'm going to stock it to stock up. But just to give you an idea of what an everyday carry bag is, uh, mine usually has my gun in it, which I took out and put in that bag a few minutes ago. Um, it's got a gun. It's got a basic first aid kit, and by that I, I mean very basic. A alcohol swabs, hand sanitizers, um, bottle of triple an antibiotic ointment, some band-aids, uh, burn cream, chapstick, basic stuff. Nothing fancy, nothing that's going to solve um, or treat bullet wounds, femoral arteries, you know, uh, it's just, just basic first aid stuff. Um, I carry a pair of binoculars in here because I'm on the road a lot. I like to hunt. Quite frankly, I just want to see what's going on. I've used them in traffic to go, what in the world is that blocking up traffic, you know, two miles ahead? Oh, I can see now. Oh, okay. Can I go ahead and turn around and get out of this or not? Um, I carry two spare mags for the pistol that I carry in my bag. I carry a, I don't carry a box of ammo because I have one in the truck. If, if I were to for some reason need to get out and take my bag, I could always just grab the bag, I mean, the box of ammo out of the truck and not have to carry this bag all the time. Um, I carry basic survival tools, and I mean very basic, nothing fancy here. Waterproof matches, a lighter, fire sap, knife sharpener, a spare Zacto blade. Um, one of those things I got as a gift and went, eh, hey, I'll use that. i put it in here. Fire starter, wire saw, road flare, and a survival book. And quite frankly, most of us don't necessarily have all the, the tools and uh, uh, tactics that we would need to survive some more complicated situations by a little book. That particular one is the, the pocket-sized version of the SAS handbook, and it's full of cool stuff. How to make a fire in various conditions, what kind of fruits and vegetables you can eat in a pinch, what kind of animals, birds and fowl you, you can eat if you were to, have to, uh, to be forced to, what, what kind of basic first aid you might need to give or receive and how to do it. So. Uh, how to use a signal flare, how to read a compass, all the little things you might need to know if you're stuck in the woods for a couple days and you're too suburbanized to be able to navigate on your own. So mine's got my GPS strapped to it and that's about the gist of mine. It usually has a pack of food in here um, like an MRE bar, something like this, um, which I, I opened up for the previous video to show you guys. And a, I've, I've always got a bottle of water or something else that I can just kind of tuck in here if I had to leave. Ideally, you should be able to pick up this bag, and even though it might be uncomfortable, you should be able to survive a night wherever you had to go. Uh, woods, um, stuck in your car, you at least have enough calories of food to get you through the night, you have enough water to be hydrated, you got band-aids for small emergencies, um, I have a road flare. So it's more just, just quick and dirty. I need to survive kind of stuff for a small amount of time. Um, then you have the other end of the spectrum. This is Titan. I call it Titan because it actually says Titan. That's the brand. Um, this is a high Sierra bag. Uh, the brand of it, the, the particular model of this bag is called a Titan. Thanks again, Mary Brandon. This was my birthday or Christmas present the other year when I was trying to upgrade my bag. This is an actual bug out bag. So this is my 
Yep, that's right. I got a man purse. Proud of it. All right, I'm proud. I, I can take this in the field. It's actually kind of comfortable. I take it to the gun range because um, it's got my gun and my gun on stuff in it. It's just a nice bag to have around. I don't care if it's a trip to the beach. So it, you, you can take the strap off. You can click that, disconnect it, and you can fold the straps up inside the back and get them completely out of the way, and the bag looks about like that. Then you have this beast. This is my current, God, bug out bag. And you're going to go, dude, that thing looks immense. It is. It's heavy as hell. I'll be honest. This one's about 65 pounds right now. So the idea being that I can put this bag on, walk away from my truck, and never look back. Doesn't matter if it's for a day, a month. It has everything I've got to have to survive if you remember to bring the everyday carry bag. Um, I will go into details on what this bag's got in it later if you want to help build your own bug out bag. But, so there's the there's one extreme end. It's even got a hammock, tarp, sleeping bags. That thing is nice. Food, cooking utensils. Um, this is my wife. I built this for her. This is a U.S. Army 3D assault pack in ACU. 30 pounds, got a couple, changed the clothes, got the things that she would need to uh, just survive the basic stuff, make fire, um, serve food, cook food, purify water, just 30 pounds, easy sack, she can just grab this and go. Um, this is kind of like what stays in her, in her, her vehicle all the time. And on the other end, uh, just to clarify, in case you're curious, the Titan's about 150 bucks. Um, that little every, everyday carry bag was about 45 or 50. But my Expedition Sabercat, I changed it for about 120. But with, as with all their gear, you get what you pay for and it's worth the money. Um, this is a rifleman's pack. This is what I had before I had the Titan. And as big as it looks, and just to be clear, this is a pack a rifleman puts on to go in the woods and never come home. <laughs> it's got uh, the, the sleeping bag pouches, two sustainment pouches. It has the frame. You can buy these used military surplus between $65 to, I'll say, $85. And that usually includes being strung on the frame. So if you're looking to get one, they're great packs. Be sure you get one that's rigged, unless you're in the military, in which case you know how to get one and you know how to rig your own pack. But if you're just a, a, a civilian that's never used one, getting all these pouches and a plastic frame and going, here, I follow that. It's complicated. So, great bag. I used it for a long time. My biggest reason to switch was not enough space, believe it or not. This bag is 3,000 cubic inches, about 50 liters. Um, that sounds like a lot of stuff. This bag here is 65 liters, which is close to 4,000 cubic inches. It's not really physically bigger. It has 25% more storage capacity. I actually can't fill that bag. That bag doesn't even look good because it's not full enough. Um, but it's all I can carry. So, rifleman's pack, 3D assault pack, you can buy these on, on uh, surplus. I'd say between 35 to 50 bucks. If you've got kids, um, having a bug out bag for yourself is great. What about little Johnny and little Susie? I've got one for my son that we pack up, keep in the house, and then for some reason, I don't know, the house caught fire and we had to take off. My nose, grab your, grab your bag. That's everything you need. A couple changes of clothes. Food, sleeping bag, tarp, all the stuff you gotta have to survive. It's all right there. So, those are the extremes between everyday carry bags and bug out bags. Now we're gonna go into, in the next series of videos, um, more details on each, what's in one, and yes, I'm gonna try to do my best to break this entire pack down and show you what's in it and why I carry it, and then give you links to purchase that gear if you choose, to, uh, if you believe you like it. Not every bag is perfect for every person. Um, what works for me, I live in the south, it's hot half the year, it's moderately cold. Even my cold weather gear would not do me good in Alaska or New York State. So take my contents with a grain of salt when I show them to you and understand that your bag should be different. I do have a great post on what's in a bug out bag and what you need to have. Um, that's already written last year. I've just never done it into a video. So I'll post that link here. You can go on the website 8minutesoffame.com and check it out there. Um, if you have any comments about this video or questions, try not to leave them on the YouTube page. Well, you can, but I don't necessarily promise to see them there. Go to the blog page, this link below, 
and put your comments there, and I'll see them, all right? And I'll try to respond as soon as I can. Thanks, and have a good day. See you in the next video.